but we know that this, but we know that this plantain is also relevant for other parts in the world, like in Asia and Latin America. We are breeding cooking bananas called matoke, which are unique to Africa, but we're also breeding the Amshari bananas. And in fact, the Amshari bananas are not just cooking bananas for Africa, they are the parents of Cavendish and Gros Michel. That means we are putting the, the base also for breeding elsewhere. Next slide. Next slide, please. So, but it takes time. And that's another message which, which can be answered during the, the questions. Uh, we have good results with very high yields. And look at the slide on the left side, what a gigantic yield increase we have. But I should say that's the work of 17 years. So it's important to keep on persisting in the work you're doing and overcome problems of short financial uh, support. And on the right side, we see our plantains, which are now flourishing in West Africa. They have been accepted by different national programs. Next slide, please. But to get there, and that's uh, the last slide I'm showing, important is, for me at least, I cannot do everything on my own, not even with my own team of IITA. While we are focusing on that in Africa, we need collaborators. And first of all, we are working, in our case, with our national programs in Uganda, Naro, and Tari in Tanzania, because that's where we want to make the first impact. But we need specialists from all over the world. And we looked around, and I just want to highlight a few. We need people who are strong in fusarium research. So that's why we are collaborating with South Africa, because they are screening our germplasm, our hybrids, for, for race one and TR4. But then we need partners in the field. And that's why I'm happy that um, I can link up to the, to the host of today. We have been collaborating with Dr. Yasmin Otman for the physician research in the field. And Dr. Uma, one of the other panelists for testing our field in the field, because testing in the lab is one thing, testing the field is something else. And yesterday you heard about a talk from Dr. Professor Elizabeth Eichen from Queensland University of Australia. And she's also assisting us with the gene discovery. So, and then I will not document all the persons, but for example, we need new hybrids. And that's why we are happy that we are collaborating with the breeding program, not only in India, but also in Brazil, in Embrapa. So with that one, I stop this presentation. The point is, if we want to succeed on a, on a specific thing in breeding bananas and plantains, we cannot do it on our own. And we are happy that we found and identified many excellent partners all over the world. Thank you very much. Prof, I mean. uh, and, and so, uh, thanks, Ronnie. I can I repeat myself? Um, you know, uh, the way that Ronnie has put together this incredible consortium and how it works together and how the output is really uh, has really come out is really pretty impressive. Um, and uh, we'll hear more about it as we chat. So, I'd like to invite um, Uma, uh, Dr. Uma, to give her. Presentation yeah. or introduction? Yes, yes, please do. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Otuma, and congratulations for you and your team for excellent conduct of this uh, conference. Um, I don't have a PowerPoint presentation, but still, I would like to say what uh, we are doing at the uh, uh, National Research Center for Banana. Ours is an exclusive institute working only on bananas in collaboration with a uh, complete NAR system, National Agriculture Research System. So this system, uh, something is called All India Coordinated Research Programs, wherein uh, we have 11 centers uh, being monitored by a National Research Center for our institute uh, to work on various aspects. Whatever the technologies developed uh, at our institute, at the state agriculture universities will be brought into the uh, All India Coordinated Research Programs, wherein all the 11 centers are the uh, uh, are any number of maybe you know, six, maybe few are not interested, but all eleven centers in one way or the other they will conduct the technology testing at under via diverse agroclimatic conditions. Once it is tested under multi-location trials, 
then it will go as a technology at the national level and this will be uh, 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 the technology will be transferred to ministry of agriculture uh, at uh, headquarters new delhi and through ministry of agriculture it will be circulated to all the state departments uh, for the adoption of the technology so it is a very very huge network as it is india is so so huge banana production is huge networking is huge so monitoring all this uh, is being done by technical advice and monitoring is done by our institute here we also work on the sustainable production um, export and value addition for the banana here we also work with the line departments it's not only uh, IC, icar is working we work with state agriculture universities we also work with the state departments who in turn will uh, give subsidies will in turn give support to the farmers in terms of subsidies seed planting material irrigation system drip irrigation or even uh, bunch management um, pro, um, the uh, inputs for bunch management all will be supported so those technologies will be developed at our center and different centers tested at multi location uh, uh, multi locations and technologies are given like this so it is a huge huge system um, i think in the uh, coming discussion i will be uh, discussing more how um, all the partner institutes are involved how uh, the international collaboration has really worked uh, yeah, I have been in uh, working with Banana NRCB with almost for uh, 28 years and working very closely with the Biovacity, with the KUL, Leuven, and many other um, uh, international institutes. The dividends accrued under these collaborations, I think I will narrate it uh, uh, during the course of our uh, discussion. So we, we are supported by the core funding from the ICA. We also have external projects from Department of Biotechnology, Department of Science and Technology, uh, within and state departments within the country. And if it is within the uh, within the state departments, then we have more. Um, uh, what do you say? Uh, more for the developmental activities. That is more of outreach programs. We try to uh, encourage the farmers to go for crop diversification, varietal diversification, then cropping systems, uh, then how to uh, give value addition, how to bring in, uh, dub doubling the farmer's income is the motto of the government. Uh, so all these technologies, how we can bring in the, um, the inclusive development of the farmer and the stakeholders in the community is the motto and we work towards it. So this is in broad spectrum what we work at the Institute and I shall try to discuss during the course of our uh, interaction. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you, Uma. Uh, very comprehensive, and I think so much more to learn. Uh, I heard about diversity, co-funding, diversity, you know, monitoring, which is something that I really want to bring up with the whole group after this, you know. How do we monitor this uh, kind of collaborations which uh, span all sorts of stakeholders? And talking about stakeholders, uh, our next speaker, of course, is uh, no stranger to diversity of stakeholders. Uh, so, uh, Chia Kumat. Uh, floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Yasmin. First of all, uh, I'd like to thank the organizers yeah, for inviting me, giving me the opportunity to uh, share some of my thoughts uh, in this uh, roundtable discussion. And secondly, I'd like just to echo what uh, Dr. Omar just mentioned. Uh, congratulations to the team. Uh, spl splendid job. Okay, uh, maybe I'll start by just uh, uh, Giving an account, or just tell you what, what we do, what, what is TFNet, International Tropical, and, and, and what do we do, how we establish. And uh, uh, well, actually, International Tropical Food Network, which I'm advising now, is is, uh, uh, is an international organization. We were established in the year 2000 under the FAO's, uh, that time they had international intergovernmental group, intergovernmental group for bananas and tropical fruits. And uh, we were uh, kind of uh, um, mandated to, to, look in, to look at trade and uh, to look at the consumption, production, more, more on, on economics. But uh, at the same time, we, we took uh, uh, an undertaking that, yes, we will support whatever research there is to, uh, to, 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 pro to promote consumption and, and for better production and, and, and promote trade and so on. Uh, 
we were established in the year 2000. Uh, there were a few countries bidding for this uh, network. And I think during that time, Malaysia sort of set up a proposal that uh, it should be hosted by, by Malaysia. So we've been in Malaysia since uh, 2000, currently we're here. And uh, we are also managed by a board. So the board is made up of uh, representatives from country members. We have, uh, mem we, we have members made up of countries, associate, uh, associate members which are, in, uh, which are, uh, who are institutions and also honorary members. And FAO has, has a permanent representative in the, in the board. And uh, what do we do? Uh, we have uh, organized uh, capacity building activities, training, workshops, uh, symposiums and conference and so on, all related to tropical fruits. Uh, we also do consultancies and of course uh, information sharing. So how do we get into this international co collaboration thing? Well, actually, as the name suggests, International Tropical Fruit Network, we're a network. So we're, we're fortunate because we already have members in the network. So how do we, we build up the, the, the network? We, 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 we uh, engage with our members and members have got other network networks, so, so we, we build up the network slowly. Okay, back to uh, why are we into bananas here? So I'm just going to look at the Malaysian context first. Uh, many years uh, ago, in, in, in early 2000 year, or, or earlier, if, if we look back at the uh, Malaysian agriculture, we, we have been continuously, continuously, we've been faced with this problem with, post, with pests and diseases. For example, I remember uh, we, our, our pepper industry was wiped out with Phytophthora. Uh, we had our citrus greening in, in Trungganu and the, the whole thing was wiped out. Of course, banana, we, you know, we, we, we suffered from uh, Fuzirin, we still do, we have the problem. And uh, cocoa, yeah, the whole industry, we were doing well in cocoa, but we got wiped out with the cocoa pot, yeah, cocoa, uh, cocoa problem. And, uh, we were doing very well with papayas and we got hit with the ring spot virus and then with bacteria. So, big issue. Passenger has been a big issue. So, we, we, we started with that. And uh, in I remember the first time we did something, it was in 2010. We organized a, 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 a one day seminar in, in Serdang in Mipes. Uh, we invited stakeholders and we had speakers coming from China. Uh, and with Dr. Lee Chun, and then we had uh, Gas Molina from Philippines and we from Indonesia. That's how we started getting or uh, working together with, with, with the other heavyweights of the banana industry. And then in 2010, we followed up, we, 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 we uh, organized a side event in FAO Rome. It, it was, I, I'm not sure whether uh, Ronnie was there, but we had uh, people coming in. Uh, it was during the CCP, it was during the committee of. Uh, Committee for Community Problems meeting, so we, we, we had that organized in, in 2014 just to give that awareness. Uh, it, it was kind of a simple uh, simple uh, side event, just telling people about what, about what we should be doing about, you know, uh, Fusarium and so on. And, and later, I think uh, it was uh, developed by FAO into a, a, a global framework, how do we deal with, with this problem. And recently, it was last year when we had the uh, uh, together with Asia and uh, GDAS and Chartas of, uh, of uh, China and also uh, Alliance of SEAT and Biodiversity, we had uh, a, a, a virtual workshop. It was a, a four-part four, four part workshop. It went on for four weeks, but uh, only uh, three hours for, for that every week. And it was a very successful workshop. So I thought that, that, that was sort of our, you know, our, our, our show for, for, for Bananas and last day. And uh, after that, we, we, we we did receive many uh, uh, inquiries from, from from the other parties. Uh, I think uh, right now we, we are still continuing doing it. Uh, uh, maybe later we will just. Uh, see, we, 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 I'm not a researcher. We, we sort of we provide platform for people to discuss. So I think we will continue doing that. And maybe in the course of this uh, discussion, we will just uh, think of uh, some other better ways. But but I think the main message is now many countries in the world they do. The approach, the approach is different because it depends on the resources and the state of development. Like Malaysia, we, we lack the resources, resources, but we we have a, we are 
good in certain resources. So in Australia is different, in China is different. So that's why I think collaboration is important because we can tap the knowledge gained from, from all the different resources. Uh, I'll just stop there and maybe uh, continue later on. Thank you so much. You give me a, a, a lot of ideas there. Um, you know, different resources in different countries, certainly that's it. And and for young researchers, you know, I think um, Mr. Yaakob, uh, you know, rattled off a string of uh, institutions, agencies and all that who are actually uh, within this game, you know, and are able to support uh, collaborations or provide platforms for collaborations, you know. So um, uh, we, we really need to be able to see each other and, uh, and platforms like uh, International Tropical Fruit Network, I think coming into uh, banana, uh, gives us yet another network uh, that uh, we can enhance our collaboration and we will look forward to hearing more from Jacob as we uh, continue the conversation. We'll move on to Dr. Sheng from Guangdong in China. Uh, Dr. Sheng, tell us a little bit about yourself or your institution. Yes, you have uh, I have a presentation. So the organizer please uh, send Yes. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, the organizer and uh, the chairman, to, um, <clears throat> to allow me to have a, a good uh, opportunity here to, to introduce our institution. The, uh, in our institution, uh, the team is a banana research team. It uh, belongs to the Institute of Fruit Tree Research from the Guangdong Academy of Agriculture Sciences. So, uh, please, uh, the next slide. Yes. And uh, it's local in Guangdong province. It's very near, it's the southern part of China. Actually, it's uh, very near to Malaysia. So, it's um, the climate is uh, subtropical and uh, a little bit hot in China. So, uh, please, uh, the next slide. Yes, so you will, uh, you will see the yellow card, the yellow card, uh, yellow, yellow uh, color here. So we are uh, from here. It's uh, uh, close to the South China Sea, mm -hmm. very close to Malaysia. And uh, the climate is very suitable for the banana production. So here the map, we have the banana production in, in, in China mainland. We have uh, uh, actually in uh, uh, five uh, province. Um, the main production area in China is from Guangdong, Yunnan, Guangxi, and uh, Hainan province. So the main uh, co uh, cultivated group is uh, Cavendish and uh, Pisan Wok. So Pisan Wok in China is uh, uh, also is very uh, good varieties in, in, in for dessert bananas. So the next uh, slide, please. The, the, China, the Chinese banana industry is built on the Cavendish. Uh, the, the biggest, uh, the, the clone is uh, Williams, it's the most the popular variety, occupied for more than 50% in China. Has, uh, it has a lot of the super economic and economic traits. We select uh, the uh, uh, summer clone from the Williams. So we have a uh, lot of the varieties. Um, but the, the big problem in China is also the FOC TR4 uh, since 1996. Uh, um, almost all the Cavendish clones are sensitive to FOC TR4, including the Williams and the Basi. Um, uh, Basi is uh, another uh, main cultivar in China. Uh, we also have a production problem from the frost typhoon and the post harvest uh, loose. Uh, we, we only have uh, a dessert banana. We don't have the cooking banana and no, uh, almost no uh, uh, processing industry right now in China. We, uh, but we, we want to, to build the processing industry in China. So please, uh, next slide. Yeah, this is a show. Um, for some world, uh, I think a lot of people are very familiar with this uh, big problem. Mm. Okay, the next slide, please. So our the, 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 
uh, the research targets in our group, um, we have uh, uh, four parts. The first one is a large scale uh, gen present collection variation that utilizes utilization. And the second is breeding, breeding work for a uh, high resistance to TR4, uh, or mainly from the mutant genesis and the cross breeding. And the third for the, um, the fundamental uh, uh, work for gene mining and the transgenic breeding. And just the uh, daughter Wuma uh, just uh, introduced her, her uh, uh, work in, uh, in India. The second, uh, the, the last one is for the uh, uh, cultivation technologies and uh, some uh, area we have uh, organic cultivation technologies. So, okay, let's uh, next uh, slide, please. Yeah, they have uh, uh, one of the largest uh, collection in the world. They are all, uh, almost have more than um, 14, uh, uh, 400 accessions from uh, mm -hmm. local and also from the world, from the ITC and also some uh, accessions from India. And then the next slide, I, I just want to introduce someone, the local accessions uh, uh, in, uh, in, in China. Uh, like this genus is a uh, Musella genus. I think this is a native uh, accession in China we, um, because uh, you can see the temple uh, is very uh, famous and very common that the, the temple in, in Yunnan province is south um, east uh, part of China. So I think it's a native uh, accession in China. And please, the next accession. And also the Bajiao, you will see this Bajiao accession. Uh, this is uh, called Torrance the accession. And uh, the Bajiao, actually Bajiao is a uh, um, Chinese pronunciation. So uh, next slide. And uh, this is uh, some uh, um, foreign scientists very interested about this accession is uh, called Yunnanesis. And uh, this also is wild species. Uh, it's a very uh, mm -hmm. special uh, um, uh, uh, Clark So the next slide. And uh, this is very common in, in China, the wild species uh, is called the uh, Musa Aetherans. They, they have uh, some uh, very similar uh, 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 subspecies, uh, subspecies species of this, of this. Okay, the next uh, species, next, uh, Slides. Okay, this one is um, uh, the pictures in uh, Tibet. And so I think this essentially I uh, have some uh, cold tolerance. Um, so this uh, this very specific uh, assertion. So the next slide. Okay. Yes, we have a big uh, gem prism uh, collection in, in China. We, we use the field and the greenhouse and in Visual to conservation about our accession. Okay, next one. Yeah, this is show our picture in the greenhouse for the conservation, uh, the banana conservation. And uh, we uh, construction some uh, lots of the experimental field. We have a uh, lot of more than five. So in a different location in China because China is so big. So it's a different kind of the climate and. Uh, um, biological, uh, we want to evaluate the in a different location. We put a lot of the efforts in crossbreeding, mainly for uh, peace and work, ABB hybrids. So right now we have uh, uh, some uh, uh, peace and work hybrids uh, for the crossbreeding for, uh, we can have a, for, 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 for further exen uh, extension. This is, uh, uh, this is the picture show our crossbreeding for gets the embryo, uh, embryo, uh, embryo rescue. Okay, the next uh, slide. Yeah, this is also show our the, the embryo rescue and our the, the hybrids the, using the party identification. And uh, in the five years ago, we built a, a new building um, plot in Hainan. Hainan is a tropical area in China. It's very close to the Philippines. So they have a tropical area, so we built a new uh, uh, base in there for the cross breeding. Okay, let's next slide. 
we have uh, more than uh, 14, uh, 40 uh, Python work hybrids in the field. Some of them have a good uh, uh, traits. So I think uh, this is, uh, and also it's high resistant to the TR4. So it's very good news for our dessert uh, Pisa work industry. We, for the uh, cavities, we have been using mutual genesis. Uh, this uh, strategy to uh, to generate uh, generates the uh, summer chrome for Cavendish. Okay, uh, next slide. We use using the uh, uh, double chromosome for create the tetraploid uh, uh, accession, uh, like the piece of mass and and the uh, uh, lily and, and also the rose. Okay, next one. Yeah, this is uh, just show our uh, the new clones uh, and uh, uh, in the field for uh, further observation in, in China for uh, it has higher tolerance to uh, TR4. Okay. Uh, this is some of the, our new cultivars like like the Zhongjiao uh, number eight. It uh, has high heat and high good quality and a beautiful um, bunch and uh, fingers. Okay, this is for our TR4 testing in the field. And next one. Yeah, so some of the cultivars released in, the, in the China. Okay, I want to, to some, uh, some introduce our uh, international cooperation. Uh, this one is our uh, very important partner. Uh, right now we call it the Biodiversity and the Sea and Allies. Uh, 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 just several years ago, Dr. Marina built our uh, deeper cooperation relationship with the uh, um, biodiversity right now, uh, Dr. Sijun. So we also uh, take part in the summer projects uh, and uh, going by the uh, uh, Biodiversity International. So in the world, in, in African countries, we, we build a relationship with the NARO. We, we know the NARO have a very good uh, um, crossing um, breeding work in uh, work. Uh, they also have the GMO uh, technologies. And so, okay, the next slide. We have also built a uh, cooperation uh, with the IITA, the former is Gene Lawrence, and right now it's the G, um, uh, 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 Norris Swan professor. Uh, we, uh, but uh, we also want to build uh, further um, uh, uh, work with them. And, and, then, and then the next slide, we, okay, the next slide. Yes, we also have good relationship with the Embrapa in Brazil, uh, Dr. Edison. They have also uh, good work in uh, cross reading. Uh, in a, uh, maybe 10 years ago, we, I visited the Embrapa. For the Fusan Wild uh, field, we we have strong correlation uh, uh, with the with the Stanford University. Uh, Dr. Otto Altas and uh, the Professor Otto Lot, they, he's a very famous uh, uh, the scientist in the Fusan Wild. Okay, next slide, please. We have a good uh, relationship with the the uh, 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 Adamas, the University in. Uh, 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 United States, the uh, E.G. Ma, he's, uh, she is a very famous uh, bioinformation bio uh, scientist in uh, FOC TR4, uh, 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 fungi. Okay, the next uh, slide. Okay, we also have uh, uh, Con uh, Connor University uh, relationship with the, uh, the Professor uh, uh, Zhang. We, we uh, use it in uh, per Performing uh, field. Okay, the last uh, slide is uh, show our group uh, map. The uh, Dr. Yi is uh, our group leader. I'm just in charge of the uh, general project evaluation and building work. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Shang. It was certainly a very impressive uh, list of collaborators. And you can yes. see how the banana world is huge, but uh, sorry, the world is huge, but the banana world is intertwined and interrelated. And you can see the really strong collaborations between all these institutes and um, people um, uh, really try and work together. And so we, we, we want to now look at well, what is this magic formula that, you know, you, you can see all our lead collaborators here today. Uh, they've been talking about 
how important it is um, to form these collaborations. And obviously it's been very successful with the institutions. So I'm going to go back to the panel. So maybe Shakirin can pin us all uh, to the main uh, board here so we can see everybody at once and then um, start the panel going. And uh, I'll start back with, uh, with Rani, but you know, later on in no particular order, we'll go through, uh, we'll, dis we'll discuss various things, you know. Um, looking at all these incredible collaborations that have been described by your, yourself and uh, other members, you know, how how uh, what has driven the success? What was the first the the you know the core success factor that has driven success in building this collaboration? Just as a general start to this conversation, you know, I mean, where do we start? You know, when we try to think of collaborations at this level, I mean, Ronnie, do you want to do you want to have a go? Yeah, um, I think the success of collaboration starts, first of all, by recognizing your own weaknesses. That means that uh, let me look for partners who are in, a, in, in with a certain expertise where they complement what you want to do. Um, let me give the example in, in the breeding we are doing at IITA. It, we are not good in the fusarium or gene discovering for fusarium. I make it very simple. So you have to look for the right partners and then you look around and then um, you you discuss with them to collaborate. So I think it's important recognizing your own strength and your own weaknesses. Then when you have done that is to, um, to agree to um, a clear set for the future. So you have the long term, uh, long term um, vision, but the short term saying what can be done together next year and the year thereafter. So be really basically framing, uh, planning the work. And so not an open-ended contract, but saying, I want you to deliver this and this and this. And, and I think, and then um, what I also would like to say is that we move on. And I, I think all the time saying, I'm happy, but keep on going on to the next level. So never be satisfied because in science, we, we are on the search of discovery. We will never know everything. That means um, be happy what uh, what we deliver today, the master we have next year, but still saying even if I have one, keep the vision for the future. That I would say is I think the key for success. So, so, so Mr. Jacob, you 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 also um, kind of echo what Ronnie said. You know, I mean, everybody has different strengths and resources, right? And uh, you know, but uh, like. It's, it's interesting to, to, to try and say uh, we need to have a very specific goal, um, but every um, in every sort of country or every region or every but institute has different uh, ta uh, goals or targets, you know, different priorities, you know. So, uh, you know, how, how do you reconcile this in, just in starting? I, I, I tend to agree. Well, I agree with, with what Ronnie mentioned about you need to know your strengths, your, your weaknesses. And I think to do that, you need to have contacts. You need to have a network. You have to you have to create a whole network, and and, and you have to learn more of what's happening around you. Because uh, more often than not, sometimes uh, we tend to work in silos. We think we're doing this and we're okay, but actually, when when when, when you go out of it, uh, you 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 get to know more what's happening. And uh, I th see the the main thing is I think is whenever there's something going on, maybe something on fusarium. One certain aspect for them, you, you need to go and listen, you know. And I think even if if I, if you're a breeder, see, I'm a breeder, I would also listen to what the guy who's doing, uh, who, who's working on cultural techniques or somebody working on bio, microbiome, because soon it will come together and, and, and you'll get a better picture of the whole thing. But uh, uh, back to what Ronnie mentioned that yes, you have to know your weakness you know, and what you want to do to improve what you already know. I think that's, that's the uh, the push factor yeah but at the same time uh, Ronnie uh, I think we have to be a bit realistic also that uh, how do we do it uh, so we have to depend on some factors external factors for example is there a grant or is there is somebody who's going who's willing to to uh, uh, collaborate with you with that research so it also depends on that because sometimes we have big ideas we, we have uh, our goals we know what you're going to do but then there's always the limiting factor and says, well, we need half a million, you know, can you get the money? So th th that's the other thing, you know? Uh, and uh, maybe maybe here it is good to discuss about that, that like uh, when we have something in common, something which really 
importance, which is the, uh, the first priority. Maybe we, we can work on some some proposals and look for funders you know, to, to to work on it. Something to that effect, because uh, basically that's how uh, the net works. We, we we try to focus on something and then we try to get some 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 uh, collaborators uh, with you know, some 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 kind of uh, financial backing so that we can just go ahead and. It's important to include all those who are uh, uh, at, a at a disadvantage when it comes to research. Because like I said, there are many levels of research. Some can afford good e equipment, some cannot afford good equipment. But at the same time, some has got fantastic biodiversity of, of bananas, but, and some don't. So, so we, we, we can sort of exchange uh, I think things like that. Yeah, thank you. That's just my, my, my take. So, so on that note, like, like Dr. Mai, like you said, some, some countries maybe don't have the big strength. I mean, M Malaysia right now, we have big strength say, in resources, we have interest, but, you know, we don't uh, yet see ourselves as, as a big player in, in research. But, uh, but, you know, we need all this research to improve uh, the livelihood of our banana farmers and all that. How, in India, I mean, how do you reconcile this? I mean, you're part of this big consortium, so, but... The, the issues are still very local, right? But you have built this uh, collaboration. So how do you reconcile your funding, your funding bodies and all that to it around this? Yes, this kind of collaborations, there are two ways of looking at it. One is you identify the problem, you try to see uh, what is the gap you have and who will be the best uh, collaborator who can fill in the gap in terms of expertise, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of uh, uh, material, uh, the diversity. That is one way of approach. The other approach is uh, sometimes in some of the projects, you do get the, um, what do you say? Um, uh, for example, say, uh, when we had a long collaboration with Biodiversity, we had a couple of projects uh, supported to biodiversity and we were part of it like uh, evaluating varieties for ITC accessions for drought tolerance. It so happened that one of the varieties that PISA, uh, the SABA, uh, it, it uh, outperformed all other varieties and it is salt tolerant, it is at, uh, uh, soil moisture deficit tolerant. It's an excellent variety. It comes up in marginal soils. So somehow this was picked up by the uh, uh, by NRCB and we brought that into the seed system and somehow it is uh, really benefiting the farmers in a large way. The other best example is in one of these collaborations is uh, uh, the number of the dwarf pisangava which was uh, through clonal selection we did some kind of work, uh, clonal selection and the best performing clones were taken. That was given to the coastal areas where cyclone problem is more. So when uh, recently when we were hit by a Gajja cyclone, all other varieties, they were toppled down. Only this the number of home selection only stood in the farmer's field. So farmers are very much con uh, convinced. So the collaboration, th this was unexpected collaboration. Somehow it yielded some varieties which are really of national importance. Mm -hmm. uh, though the whole process took almost 10 years to bring these international varieties into the seed system, there are still some issues which are to be looked upon. If it is an international variety, how do we release that into our seed system? Can we release that? Under what terms and conditions we can release? Of course, Biovacity has some, uh, some SMTA, but it is really not very quantifying uh, how to release. So sometimes it becomes difficult for the policymakers to allow international, introduce varieties to release into the uh, seed system. Until it, the, uh, it comes to the seed system, farmers will not be benefited in terms of production of planting material, getting subsidies, they will not be benefited. So we have to bring it in the seed system, but there are some issues. So collaboration does uh, give a lot of benefits, but their logical conclusion, in terms of reaching the end users, we really, as an international uh, committee, we have to look into some of these issues so that uh, all the benefits accrued should be brought on the, uh, uh, I mean, should be uh, percolated to the end users. That's a very, so very important is, point, yeah, very important yes. point. Yes. And yes. second, yes. And second thing is the kinds of uh, uh, funding support. Um, many times, uh, uh, banana will be the one of the last crops to get funding from the uh, 
<laughs> state or central government they yeah, think so yes, very easily yes. and you produce so much what is I mean, the necessity of producing much in, interesting it's thing you know, it's the world's most yes. popular crop but in centers of origins uh, in, yes. in um jeep said this yesterday the support uh, is yes. been lowest where the banana is at the at the the most <laughs> i mean it's yeah. a funny story yeah when you have so much diversity why do you need funding for breeding so yes, that exactly. the breeding banana never gets any funding at the national level yes, so yeah. only the uh, so these are the things which are we have to really look uh, that is when the melinda gates funded project uh, led by uh, being led by dr roni really came as a a boon to one breeding. of the nice things about that project for, for yes. us is it it, it highlights yes. the the fact that other people saw breeding as very important yes. and yes. enable us to use that as as a, as a narrative to say no. okay, we should really build up our own national breeding program as well yes i mean um uh, somebody yeah. Jacob or ronnie you want yeah. to say can, can I, before sorry. i go to sheng yeah can i just, can I just say a little bit i, I think i I totally agree with Dr. Uma when you mentioned about availability of planting materials here. Because basically, just to recap, when, when we had the workshop last year, the message was, okay, you, you guys have got resistant varieties, do you want to share? I think that was what we were trying to, and, and we were thinking of, well, if we could collaborate, have a project, do, can we have multi-locational trials of certain yeah. varieties? some in India, some in Malaysia, some in Philippines, and that would be fantastic. So ultimately, I think, Dr. Umar, you're right, I, I, I support you. We have to have that, that, that kind of agreement. Framework, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because if we're talking about food <coughs> security, we're talking about improvement in banana industry, we're talking about uh, controlling disease, containing this, I think that's the ultimate. Yeah, we, we and that's that question of uh, Prof. Sheng, actually, Dr. Sheng, because, you know, I, we've seen the incredible collaboration you have, also your incredible germplasm collection must be one of the biggest in the world. Yeah, exactly. 100 accessions and so uh, well funded, obviously. So, you know, how much of this is accessible to your collaborators? And, you know, how much of this, uh, you know, do you think uh, China would like to put into the, the, the world banana system? Because, you know, um, to have that kind of resource to build up um, germplasm collections and it's quite phenomenal, actually. And, um, you know, uh, I think, Ronnie, we, we really have to talk about this, about how germplasm can still be moved around and tested and, and actually utilized in different countries. But uh, Dr. Sheng, yeah, tell us a little bit more. I'm also yeah. very, uh, I think most Malaysians also don't know that uh, the Pusang Awa is the second most favorite banana in China. That's a revelation yeah. to me. Anyway, carry on. I think um, besides the resources, I mean, the material essentially and the the financial support is very, are very uh, important. But uh, uh, apart from these two components, I think uh, uh, the people uh, are, will have a very happy and uh, uh, very interesting about the, and the, the, the work they, they, uh, they are doing. Because for example, they, they, they should, uh, yeah, they should be, um, be happy and very interested in the banana research, they, they should take the patients, the patients, uh, and to to uh, to in, in the banana research fields. So I think uh, these are very important for for to, to be the success in in the cooperation uh, in, in the research work. Yes. Dr. Shun, mm -hmm. are, are you willing to share some of your resistant varieties with other countries? Resistance varieties right now. Yeah. Uh, for cam disease right now is uh, Tunjau number eight. Yeah, but, but are you willing to share with the other countries? Yes, of course. Yeah. But it depends on the the policy, the government policy. I think. Okay. We are very we are willing to share, and this okay. is is no problem. Uh, maybe, are always willing to share. <laughs> yeah, but you know it depends on the policy, the government's policy. Yes. Maybe you can sell it to us, you know. <laughs> no, not sir. We, we, are, we are scientists. Uh, we are just doing uh, a commercial. No, no, what, what I mean is, uh, I'm, I'm sure you have a, a company uh, producing this, uh, this planting materials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
we can uh, the idea of uh, multi center uh, multi center trials for new new seedlings and you know um, the way the pharma companies do multi center trials yeah. i mean for recognition of new varieties um that be a way forward maybe uh, so that um, in as many countries as possible have access to best varieties yeah, uh, actually, running, what are your thoughts on this well, in, 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 the, in the case of ITA, we have um, developed several plantain hybrids uh, for different traits and the same thing for cooking bananas. At this very moment, they are in 16 countries in the world, 16. And uh, so everything in our case is uh, publicly available. And, and, and we do it with different intentions. One intention is, of course, we want that all the countries benefit. That's one thing. Um, and I think that should be the number one goal. But the second thing is that we would like to get feedback about um, the response because no single variety is perfect and or we won't have confirmation. And I would like to give you an, an example. Some of our hybrids of plantain are with Dr. Uma in India. And, and I think they can, they can, they deserve to be used, but it's only Dr. Uma uh, who will be able to tell us in the field under race four conditions, we confirm that a yes or no resistance. And I think it's for, for us very important. So also that feedback that, that I would say the report on, on, on the resistance from field conditions gives us added value in our work. And, yeah. and, and the, third, the third thing is also that we are happy that, that, that Dr. Uma, if she analyzes with her team the material, that the trauma that will be integrated into that breeding program. So it's so, not an end product, it can be an intermediate product. So it's part of collaboration. So I wanted to know, um, would, be, would it be a good um, kind of exercise to be able to um, sort of build and recognize uh, trial sites around the world? Like uh, ask every country to nominate their trial sites, which are very, very well defined. I'm going back to the model of uh, pharma, you know, because every trial site actually um, has a. Uh, so then there's the value for, say, China coming to test to Malaysia or India when the trial sites are very defined, say, trial sites for F uh, RIS4 or for Estonia or whatever the traits are drought. So, um, you know, defined trial sites. I mean, I haven't seen that so much. Uh, I've seen that in other crops. Uh, they have very uh, specific trial sites in different parts of the world. But, you know, could, through the network, we define that and so that whenever somebody comes, they can have easy access to all the different trial sites in the world. Would yeah, that but be something that somebody will curate? <laughs> Uh, no. Rodi said, uh, I, I know, uh, we have been evaluating his hybrids. There was a setback uh, during COVID times. And surely by uh, uh, in another couple of months, we will have some good news for uh, Rani. As such, plantains should have resistance. And uh, I think it, uh, it is in line with uh, a general uh, agreement that plantains are uh, resistant to uh, fusarium build. Uh, there are pot culture studies are already going on, but... We're taking it to field to Bihar. It is taking little time because of the COVID, but still, I think definitely uh, it will go to the hotspot uh, evaluation. Yeah. And the next thing, somewhere uh, in the uh, course of our international collaborations, we should have uh, whatever the materials developed in the international programs should be accessed by uh, the farming community. See, all these are very small, um, small and marginal farmers. Uh, sometimes. Uh, some good material goes to the tissue culture industry. Of course, it's a breeder's right. Nobody can talk about it. But my humble request will be a part of this material, if it is made accessible to uh, 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 the farmers who are uh, suffering because of their ER4, uh, any Cavendish material uh, or any material, good material which can replace Cavendish like uh, uh, Cavendish like material which can replace real grand name. Uh, that will be useful for all the people um, across the country, like, uh, even in America or even in Asia. This will be useful. Somewhere we should work on this. Uh, it's not always money; it matters. See, finally, it's a far, it is an inclusive growth, as I always say. It should be many material developed with little bit of farmer's right kept to himself. Uh, we have to make a policy that it should be freely available to the yeah. farmers. So that brings me back to. Um... The second question about diversity of uh, collaborations, right? So, um, 
you're talking about farmers as you know the really the end the, the, but what also on the other side i'm talking about policymakers and funders and ronnie talked about this about sustainable funding or you know where, where does it come from um uh, this morning jim talked about industry funding and how we can bring industry in to fund uh, using a pre-competitive contracts and things like that so uh, when you're building collaborations it has to be supported at both ends right so uh, can you sort of um, highlight to me you know, which end is most important really or, or how do we manage each different end? One end is policymakers. How do we make banana and a fundable crop uh, by both governments as well as industry? And at the other mm -hmm. end, how do we really make farmers really farmers. interested in receiving our innovation? Um, yeah. innovations? I mean, to be putting so much energy into uh, breeding and uh, you know, uh, are, the, are the farmers there to receive it or, you know, are they part of the situation? So, you know, uh, I'll go around the table with this. Okay, can I yeah. just respond to that? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Check, check up, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, well, like, actually, it's, yeah, you're talking about policymakers? Talking yeah. about small yeah. farmers. Yeah. Policymakers, yeah. small farmers, but I think the other big component... Yeah, two, two different ends of yeah, the... Yeah, yeah. Of the... But I think <laughs> the, the other big component are, are the big boys. Yes, the industry. Yeah, because if, if you look at the figures, uh, the production of bananas, Cavendish especially, don't seem to be, well, you know, decreasing exponentially. It, it's it's it plateaued off. That means the big boys are doing well. FOC or not, you know, TR4 or no. But yes, they're affected. But, uh, well, I'm just saying it because I think like it, they, they're managing the problem. They can manage it. So how do you do it? So maybe it has to be like a tripartite thing that the big boys are in, the government policies there, and, and, and the small farmers, and see how they can work together. Because uh, normally the big companies will uh, have some contract farmers to, to supply them. So, so in that way, the technology or whatever knowledge is being shared, and, and, and the government can capitalize. It's like a public, public uh, where the, the big companies, uh, especially if they're foreign companies, uh, I mean, they invested there, they should be helping the locals to, to make it better. Is this what, Ronnie, because, uh, you know, we see like in, in our consortium and all that, this is very much a public driven consortium uh, that we, I see working for most countries is public driven consortiums, not the private, hardly any except Australia are privately driven. Uh, I, I have an, 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 an maybe a different take. Um, when I'm approaching uh, donors for funding or the government, I don't put on the first place we are doing molecular biology or we are doing breeding or doing tissue culture. I start always, we have hybrids in farmers' fields. So when, and I'm not give you the example of what's going on now in Tanzania, four our, of our quick melon hybrids were released this year in the month of May, this year. And this is what, what, what the government wants to know, not that you're a good breeder uh, and that we're a good scientist to say, when will people benefit? And yesterday I was in a field here in Tanzania, we discovered a new, I would say, superb hybrid. I'm really excited about it. So today is not an official announcement about this, but what I did, I brought government officials to the breeding plots and I brought them straight to the new, new hybrid and I showed them and in the afternoon, we were eating them together. And okay. so basically, I'm, I'm showing the ends of a gigantic pipeline. And then when I'm setting that pipeline, and then I go to the farms where the hybrids are there, then I'm telling the story, look, you need to support breeding. Um, yep. So that they, they see the products, but then yep. I say upstream, you have to support. So we need to get out of this video, <laughs> you know, in the field. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, does that, is that how it works in China though? I mean, uh, you, you obviously have, uh, uh, do, you, do you have uh, funding uh, from industry or is it mainly government driven funding um, and, and how do you how do you um, position banana in, in terms of getting support China in China uh, <laughs> some um, I think the, the Chinese uh, scientists are, um, are very um, maybe the situation in China is, is better than in the other countries. Uh, actually, Chinese government input lots of the money into the research. 
but um, the problem is we should uh, apply the, the project every year. Uh, so we have a lot of money, but we found to compete with the other uh, crop, like the fruit crop, compete with the citrus, compete with the seed, uh, apple, the pear. It's not the, a long term, uh, not long term funding. It's no, not long term funding. We have uh, some long term funding, but the least we should we also should to compete with the other fruit crop. So, so this is why I want yeah. to ask Uma, you know, because uh, India has your institute, the national. So we were talking about one of our icons was talking about this this morning. You know, should Malaysia have the National Institute for Banana Research? Because we have for cocoa, we have for oil palm, we have for pineapple. Uh, you know, no, no, we don't have a pineapple. But um, should we have one for banana? You know, I mean, how has how has that worked out uh, for you? I mean, uh, in terms of long term support and of the policymakers. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, in 90s, government, uh, Indian government did think about developing crop-specific research institutes, which have con higher contribution for our GDP, of agriculture GDP. That's how banana came into the picture, along with uh, onion and garlic, pomegranate, citrus fruits. Each institute are crop-specific institutes. Okay. So I think that kind of institutes will definitely deliver in a better way, and they will act as a um, knowledge base for any governmental uh, programs and policies to be undertaken, they will be consulted and you can be a good partner and give good consultation to the government to take it forward. So uh, have is always good. Uh, for tissue culture, I was stuck. I mean, for the new varieties, how do you popularize? Uh, I think uh, uh, um, uh, Sheng was also discussing, Yakub was also mentioning. Uh, in our system, all our programs are, most of our programs are government funded. So any variety we have to popularize, it becomes uh, the responsibility of the crop specific institute which has developed that uh, variety so if it is our program we normally we take it up in such a way that we produce we have mou with the tissue culture industry buy back those uh, planting material and on our foundation day every year when we celebrate the institute's foundation day we distribute free of cost to the farmers at least five plants to take it when he's going back he will go back with five tissue uh, five our number of different varieties and uh, five plants each of that variety uh, at the same time, we also have demonstration plots. We hire uh, uh, farmers' plots, and in their plot, we demonstrate. And based on demonstration, there is a, a demand created, and that's when tissue culture companies come forward to make that bring that into the seed system. So that is how the whole system. But it is not an easy yeah. chain of uh, activities. It so we have to that. show the output, isn't not it? Like when he said, they all want to see our, what comes uh, yeah, at the end. Uh, right? Varieties released in two thousand six. It, now it has taken up, after almost 15 years, it has taken up very seriously and it has been, uh, it has spread over lot many states after it took 15 years. So it's not an easy job. <laughs> Definitely not. And the time, you know, I mean, uh, all the numbers are here, 15 years, 10 years, 17 years, you know, yes. and, and it doesn't gel, uh, as Dr. Sheng said, you know, every year you got to bid for the funding you know, uh, and compete with, with other more sexy vegetables or sexy crops. I mean, uh, there, there's always, uh, we, we need more banana icons, <laughs> really. Uh, for, for fruit, that's really, you know, nutritionally very strong and, you know, uh, easy to grow and has such universal appeal. I'm, I'm still disappointed at the level of funding, even, even internationally, you know, other than the Gates Foundation, you know, we used to have fun, um, funding from other foundations, but that has uh, dried up really, or they have moved on to other crops. Yes. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure what what was the, the what is the issue, but um, um, if we, now that we have all these collaborations, you know, how, how do we monitor, sustain uh, these collaborations really? You know, uh, this concept of monitoring is, is very interesting. I mean, um, you know, to enable us to move forward, you know, um, what, what is your take on, on that really, uh, you know, um, especially if they're international collaborations? I, I still think uh, a lot of the collaborations, um, uh, should they be bigger? Should they be more uh, global? Or should we really try and focus on bilaterals or trilaterals, which are more focused? And then how do we monitor how to go on? And any volunteers uh, to answer this? Yeah, I think for, for a start, we can start regionally because uh, as you must be aware, I think the, regionally, the 
the uh, the research focus is probably more like more, more towards developing the uh, uh, the, uh, the capacity in the region say for example I think like recently China was uh, they were discussing about uh, having some some uh, Regional project, project on yeah on, on bacteria and fungal diseases so it's something sim because I, I think to have a global it's 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 not easy unless you know, if you have a big organizing FAO or somebody who comes in, you know, and get some funding. But uh, and I think like Latin America is a different set, eh? and uh, also Africa. Too. But it's it's always important to, to get all those together and, and talk about it. But I think project wise, it's it's always good to to, to look at the region uh, because uh, it's uh, normally we, we we tend to share the the, the same things, same kind of resources and. The uh, climatically, it, it's you know almost the similar. Uh, it's easier, I think. Yeah. Maybe India, Asia, or maybe the whole Asia is, is one block. You know, so. uh, and uh, about the uh, how do we monitor? It's, uh, it's, it's it's a difficult question, but <laughs> I think it's good to just keep in touch with members of the network, keep in touch with the expert, and and we can learn something new. And when something comes up, then we'll say, okay, let, let's do it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's, it's difficult to, to get something formal right now, you know, like, unless you have uh, a big concern, like Bill Melinda Gates and the Africans, but the focus is only in, in Africa, I believe, right now. So, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not easy, actually, when you talk about that. But what, but what I just want to want to reiterate is, you want to do something uh, almost the same, we talk about the region first and then yeah so um i'm going to go to my last question actually because i just noticed the time's running out and there were some comments in in the chat box and mainly they were just reiterate uh, agreeing with a lot of the things that the panel has been talking about poor funding <laughs> and uh, more collaboration within uh, malaysia and so that. So, certainly in malaysia this is our our effort at uh, reviving uh, national collaboration collaborative projects and forming our network. So once we have the network, we feel that it's much easier for international collaborators to come and um, work with us because then we can really, you know, um, give you the best that we can give. Uh, as a last round, I think, because it's already almost uh, time up, you know, the, the, this conference actually has brought together a lot of young researchers, new researchers in Malaysia. And if you went through all the uh, presentations, a lot of them are still not collaborating maybe uh, the optimal level. Can you give a uh, last word of how they should um, go out there? How do how they should start? Uh, I'll start with uh, Dr. Sheng. You know, how how can a young researcher from Malaysia, for instance, uh, collaborate with uh, Guangdong or China or you know? I mean, what's oh. your advice? Your last word of advice. Now go around the table, and we we'll go around backwards, and then she go to mine. We'll finish off with Ronnie. We started with okay. Ronnie. Ronnie. <laughs> Uh, round. Okay. Uh, one moment eh? uh, to the to the MC. Yeah. Let's go around quickly. Yeah. Okay. I just suggest uh, the Chinese, uh, I mean, the young researchers to select one topic for research we, which you which they are very interested in and uh, are worth to do for a long term. Uh, this is very uh, important for young researchers uh, at the beginning of their research. The second one is uh, they should read a uh, lot of papers in, uh, oh, really? uh, uh, yeah, lots of international papers, and uh, uh, even email to the, uh, the authors to to ask uh, some question to uh, for communication for seek the uh, cooperation work. The third is about uh, um, they can apply the scholarship if they have uh, opportunities. I think in China they have lots of opportunities for the uh, uh, southeast. Uh, Asian, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the people of uh, the scientists from the Southeast Asian and the scientists, they can apply the, uh, the scholarship. Uh, I think it's very uh, easier. Uh, maybe after uh, two yeah. or three years later, because you know, we have the problem of the pan pandemic of the corona uh, coronavirus 19. After the disease, uh, we can maybe uh, everything is maybe normal, I, I think. It's, uh, Absolutely. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. I think Thank the Chinese government encourages the people yeah. from, uh, from 
Yeah. So we board. certainly uh, like to get all that information. We'll we'll be talking to you a lot more yes. about how we can co collaborate with the network, especially. Tiako, let's. Yeah, I'll, I'll just be showing you. I, I'm I'm not going to talk about you know learning more and stuff, but I, I'll just say that I think young people they should be passionate about what they're doing. Passion, just focus and work on it. Second, be affable. You, you have to be friendly, and you have to have a friendly demeanor so you can talk to people. Yeah, you have to be approachable. And you have to be a bit of a busybody, but not to the point of being obnoxious, yeah? I mean, you, but I think there should be a bit of extrovertness in you. I mean, you, you have just to get out to get things done. And, uh, of course, familiarize yourself with the field. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Datuma, last I, Yeah, yes. Uh, I see the youngsters, of course, they, sh uh, they can keep looking at the uh, subject of their interest and uh, which is the better institution which can offer the kind of training or kind of uh, empowerment it is required, they can have a look at it and uh, communication. Communication is more important. When you know some, when at least if, when I know somebody from Malaysia or somewhere from Philippines, they are interested to work on such a truck, I will also look for some kind of government programs and funding where they can support the foreign students. We have one such program like the TWAS, to us. Yeah. Yes, it is available for the- uh, There you go. So we yeah. have offer from China, we have offer from India. Yes, so we have a so great you opportunity. To India. Yes. You can also come to India. And sometimes on a really exchangeable basis also it can work. So it is only comes by communication. Once you have communication, if there is an interest, if there is, we will try to find a way how to accommodate. Fantastic. Uh, so Thank you. <laughs> maybe in some international projects or maybe through uh, uh, any in the core funding projects, we will try to uh, accommodate such kind of students. So Perfect. definitely have interaction. Come forward, be as uh, uh, Yakov says. Uh, uh, yeah, two-way mobility uh, is uh, fantastic. We certainly yeah. welcome, uh, you know, researchers from anywhere in the world. And Ronnie, yeah. uh, top us off with your final wise words. What I would recommend to young scientists uh, is first of all define your own niche. In what, niche yeah. in what discipline you want to excel in the future, but don't try to do everything. It doesn't work. <laughs> Um, and then the second thing is that then in that field, develop your own opinion. Do not follow the flock. Be critical. We, we are not perfect what's going on. The senior people are not perfect and what we're putting there. And if we would have, anyway, the point is that follow your own um, opinion at a certain moment. Be open for arguments. Be open for criticism. And the last point I want to make is that even if you are in an excellent institute now, move to another one. Do not stay <laughs> same place you have to be in the world you have to be exposed to another kind of culture of thinking another let's say another machine another banana absolutely. field absolutely come back to your place thank very you. good thank you so much and incredible words of uh, wisdom from all four of my panelists you know be yourself be passionate see the world communicate uh, and learn all the time so thank you very much uh, to this great panel uh, I wish I had a longer time with you guys, uh, but I'm sure we'll have you back here uh, to talk to all of us again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Ronnie. Bye, Omar. Bye, Ching. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.